You're listening to the Comprehensive Review and Forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 21st of August, 2017 for ChartingWealth.com. What do we see going on in these markets? We see another down day for stocks. That is the S&P 500, the big index that we look at. Next, we also see the Q's. Another big stock index, which is the NASDAQ 100, it is down also about half at 0.07 that we see the S&P 500 down 0.16. And we see the 20-year bond fund just barely down 0.02, hardly down at all. Gold down a little bit, also 0.16, about the same as the S&P. Let's jump right in to the week, how it shaped up. What we see is a red down candle. A lot more down movement was occurring during the week. It's got a long wick on the bottom and a wick about half the the uh, the length of the bottom wick on top. So we do have a confirmed down week. Of course, we had the weekly vertical crossover occur at the end of the week, last week on the 11th of August. And we saw during the course of this past week further down movement and the derivative oscillator flipping over to the negative, which is a positive sign for continued down movement. Now, those of you who aren't familiar with what we do and what we talk about, we practice being able to trade in the market, whether it's going up or down. My own personal experience has been it's typically easier to make money when the market is going down than up, I have found. People are always worried that a market is going to keep going higher, higher, and higher, and they jump in and then get worried and then pull out. But when a market starts to crash, people run away. And again, so we want to train in both ways. What do we see going on in the two-day chart? Of course, it crossed over. At the same time, we have a laminated crossover for the blue two-day crossover and the gold weekly crossover. They both occurred on the 11th of August. That was last Friday. And what we see going on throughout the course of this past week ending the 18th of August, we saw down movement, spinning green top at the beginning of the week. And then we saw the second two-day candle ending on the 17th down. And we saw a huge First day of the two-day candle on Friday the 18th going down. And again, as we start tuning into all of this, and particularly looking at the four- and two-hour charts, we had a crossover in the afternoon confirmed. Ask those of you who are interested in jumping into this market to wait uh, after idiot hour ended, then finding yourself a good jumping in point somewhere in around the 40 245 to 244 level, low for the day. Uh, Throughout the day, we saw that the low was $242.20. So, (coughs) excuse me, we continue to watch as this market rocks over well below the two-day trend line and, of course, below the newly forming weekly trend line. So we'll continue to watch. Hopefully you got yourself into a practice trade. Of course, if you were using the two hour chart, you had the ability to jump in. Oh, sometime in the afternoon on the prior day on Thursday, the 17th. And of course, again, the market has continued to move down. And then of course, throughout the end of the day, Uh, Late morning through the afternoon, we saw the market sort of slide sideways. So we'll continue to watch and see. Remember, we're still in the summer doldrums. This is typically the worst time of year to trade. That adage, sell in May and go away, live to trade another day that is coming back in the fall winter trading zone makes a lot of sense. Those of you who've been watching, typically the volume's a lot less because a lot of the big money is out of the market in the summertime, comes back in, everybody gets off vacation, and we slide into that fall-winter trading zone, whether the market's up or down, typically nicer, cleaner moves in either direction. Doesn't mean the market's going up, but means that it gets smoother in the direction that it is going, and right now, it is down. Now let's go to the cues on the weekly. Of course, the Qs have been in a confirmed weekly down move since they crossed over going down back on the 16th of June. 
we saw some down movement through the week ending the 7th of July. Then we had three weeks or so of up movement. Then slowly but surely that market rolling over and heading down. Derivative oscillator gained a little bit of energy. Price percent oscillated throughout the course of the week. Continued to move lower and further away from the red signal line. Into the week with a spinning top. And as we look at the two-day chart, we can see how that tracked ending the 11th. That was that past Friday. A little bit up on Monday, Tuesday time frame, then down Wednesday, Thursday, big down on Friday, continuing to accelerate as far as the growth in the derivative oscillators, downward momentum. And of course, that continued spiking down on the price percent oscillator, what we like to see. And of course, what happened on the four hour chart, crossed over going down. There was an entry point in the morning after 1030. And of course, we had prices between a high of 142.95 and a low of 140.65. And the market has continued to move down again, not as strongly as we saw on the S&P 500, but again, nice down moves. Jumping in port, of course, at the close of the candle yesterday at noon on the 17th. And again, we're recording this for you on Friday, so that was uh, Thursday the 17th of August. And again, the jumping in point somewhere around 143, and of course, as low as uh, ended the day for 141.39. Nice, what, two and a half, three dollar gain right there. Not bad for a day and a half. So again, now you don't have to use that two hour chart. You can make up your own mind, whichever chart you like better. Do remember that the two hour chart is more subject to fluctuations than the four hour chart. But again, I know how, and that is permissible under our rules to use either the four hour or the two hour chart for your trigger in order to get into a trade once there's been a pullback on that smaller chart and then a rotation back over in the direction of the weekly and the two-day candle. Now let's keep moving through these charts. Next we shall go to TLT. That is the 20-year bond fund on the weekly chart. Confirmed up move there. We saw the week end with the derivative oscillator flipping back over to positive, which is good down a little bit, just barely for the day, two one-hundredths of one percent, so 0.02 percent. And what do we see going on? Well, we see the, uh, the weekly chart, of course, is moving up. The two-day chart is moving up. Take a quick glance at the two-day chart. It crossed over going up there on the 9th, the two-day candle ending Wednesday, the 9th of August. And has continued to move up, strong up moves on the first day of this latest two-day candle ending on Friday afternoon, the 18th. And if we hone in to that four-hour chart, what do we see going on there? Well, of course, that crossed over in the afternoon on Thursday, jumping in point in the morning, somewhere around the 126 to 127 mark. And of course, we finished the day right there at 126. 54. So again, derivative oscillators continuing to gain energy. And of course, looking back, that two-hour chart gave us a jumping in point somewhere in the neighborhood of about 125.78, something like that. And of course, hit a high of 127.15 and ended the day at 126.60. So again, Whichever method you wished to use to jump into that trade, we hope that you've marked it on your trade worksheet, that you've got your reasons for doing so, and that you're going to continue to track those things, keep up with exactly what's going on and why. So let's continue to move through these charts. Going to go back to that weekly chart. And lastly, we will look at gold down 0.16% gold. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks of strong up movement. We even have three good candles, weekly candles connected. Movement is well above the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillators continuing to gain speed going up and the price percent oscillator continuing to move up and away from that red signal line. As we look at the two-day chart, we continue to see rocketing up movement. 
We've seen the two-day crossover from all the way back on July the 24th and continued up movement on that. Ribbit of oscillators losing some of its energy, but the price is continuing to move. And when we look at this four-hour chart, what do we see going on? Well, the four-hour chart is interesting. It rotated over at noon on Friday, but then as far as trying to get into a jumping in point on that four-hour chart, it really lost its way and fizzled and actually looks like it's trying to move back over going down. So we'll wait and watch and see. Again, this four-hour chart typically works very nicely for us. You can use it as a total trading chart, but it really, part of the problem, of course, was that when the crossover occurred on the price percent oscillator, we didn't see that derivative oscillator flip at the same time. It actually flipped later when it looked like we were getting a relamination and maybe a crossover going down. Let's wait and see on gold to how the market opens up on Monday and how things look at noon after that four-hour candle closes. Folks, that's where we are as we end the week and we go into the new week beginning Monday the 21st of August. We so appreciate you being with us. If you've not already signed up for and attended, well, listened to, watched the wonderful training that we have on the quarterly chart. We've been sending out lots of permissions on that and sharing that entire training with everyone. But when you follow it and you look at, and I'm showing it on the screen for those who are watching visually right now, if you're listening on audio, I will tell you that you can see how our chart predicted once the crossover occurred going down on September, the end of September of the year 2000 would have gotten you out of that huge down movement through the end of 2003, would have gotten you in about mid-2004 for a beautiful run-up until, what, late 2008, would have gotten you out for that crushing down move, and then would have gotten you back in quite nicely right there into uh, there right at the end of March in 2011 for this latest run up and then we talk about the Trump effect. If you've not received that training and you want to have it, we've got it available for you. One caveat, you've got to be a subscriber to Charting Wealth's daily market review. Doesn't cost you anything. You go to chartingwealth.com, put in your name, first name and your email address and we will put you on the list. Then, when you get your first email from us, just reply back, hey, can I get that quarterly training? We'll fire it right off to you. That's how easy it is, my friends. Hope that you had an interesting and informative and learned week this past week, and hope that you are jumping into this training with the new week coming, and you're going to be doing some practice trades and use that trade worksheet, which of course is available to everybody who subscribes. That trade worksheet is given to you free along with the daily market worksheet, the weekly market worksheet that you should have been filling out as you were listening to this weekly comprehensive review and forecast, and the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com and our how to read a stock chart video. God bless you guys. Take care. Have a great week. Write to us. If you got questions, problems, concerns, let us hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. God bless. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth.